The PBA's all-time leader in tour wins is the legendary left-hander Earl Anthony. His record of 41 titles still stands. Back in 1986, a young bowler from California named Walter Ray Williams Jr. started his ascent up the charts with his first career victory. Along the way, he has piled up six major championships, been named PBA Player of the Year six times, and has taken the tour points title six different times. This season in Cleveland, he became just the second bowler ever to win 40 titles, one shy of the record. The next week in St. Louis, and later in Medford, Oregon, he tried to tie Earl's mark, but fell in the semifinals both times. Today, he tries for history one more time in Atlanta, Georgia. Can he get number 41? We'll find out. From Brunswick Zone, Norcross in Norcross, Georgia, minutes from downtown Atlanta. ESPN brings you live coverage of the PBA Tour. Welcome one and all, Dave Ryan and Randy Peterson, along with four finalists who are ready to roll. A two-time player of the year and one of 16 players to roll a perfect game on television with 21 titles and over $2 million in career earnings from Claremont, Florida, Norm Duke. Norm Duke has done it all on TV. He's bowled a 300. He's won a sudden death roll off. He's thrown a strike out of a towel. You never know what will happen when Norm takes the stage. What a! He's making his first TV finals appearance in two seasons. Looking for his first career PBA Woo! Tour title. The two-time All-American from San Bruno, California, Tony Reyes. A couple of weeks ago, Tony lit up the highlight reel with the Flying Eagle. Can he skillfully bowl his way through Millionaire Row to win his first title? Score number one. With four career titles and over $1 million in career earnings, he makes his first TV Finals of the season today. From Elmira, New York, Ryan Schaefer. It's been a real struggle for Ryan the first half of the season. But last week, the powerful righty finished fifth. And today, he could be the guy to spoil Walter Ray's party. With a win today, he will tie the great Earl Anthony's mark of 41 career titles. A six-time player of the year from Ocala, Florida, Walter Ray Williams, Jr. Walter Ray has had two chances this season to tie Earl Anthony's record and has come up short is the third time a charm for number 41. These are your finalists for the 2005 PBA Atlanta Classic. In semifinal number one, Tony Reyes, whose last show was Super Bowl Sunday 2002, takes on Norm Duke, who's done everything this year except win. And in semifinal number two, red hot Ryan Schaefer, who finished fifth last week, takes on Walter Ray Williams Jr., who's looking to make history today. And Randy, let's start with Tony Reyes. Since 2002 in Dallas, Tony, your last title. How many nights have you dreamed about this moment returning to TV? I have been waiting to get back here, like you said, three years uh, to go after my first title, and what a way to go after it by starting it against uh, Hall of Famer Norman. So I know I gotta just trust my instincts and go out there and just go get them. Good luck to you. Thank you. You and Walter Ray have four TV shows now, Norm, this year. That's the best on the tour. Yet you told us last night you're not bowling your best. Why is that? Well, I'm just not to the point where I'm, I'm proud of it yet. I'm, I'm bowling good, and, and believe me, I'm world class, but I know that there's room for improvement. And I mentioned there, we've got uh, some majors coming, and right now is the time to peak. He is confident, Randy, no question about it. These two bowlers on the Viper pattern, 37 feet this week. Viper padded, Dave. Remember last week, we bowled on 43 feet, and you couldn't play the outside part of the lane. The outside part of the lane was very slick. Well, this week, with 37 feet, there's going to be more back in, and that allowed the players to get outside. So, rule of, thought, or, uh, rule of thumb this week, play the outside line. If that doesn't work, chase it in, play the inside hook.
some highs and lows. You can see what the players did. Now, a lot of this happens when the oil starts to transition. Oil starts to break down. Guys have to start fishing around for a different angle. Once they find it, they get locked in and they start to strike again. And right now, Tony Reyes hopes that he's locked in after 15 minutes of practice. And no break for Tony on the 10 pin. First time we've seen him on TV. It's Dallas in 2000. It's been a long time for the 31 year old from near San Jose, California. His mom, Jessica, flew in last night out of the Bay Area. And look, oh, he missed the 10 pin. You just know the nerves, Randy, must be raging. For our buddy Tony, who does work on the PBA shows with us as a scorekeeper when he's not bowling, and it's been a while for him. A little nerves and a little lack of concentration causes that. He'll have to regain his composure. Someone who has incredible composure 21 times. A titleist on the PBA Tour. And you notice he's wearing different shoes today, Randy. Trying to get the right slide sole on his left shoe. You see the Baby Ruth real deal matchup. This is a real even matchup all the way around. But remember, experience is the intangible, and that goes to this guy, Mr. Norm Duke. Spare conversion numbers for Norm, you see those. As Tony had his troubles early. Great shot, Norm Duke. Back to back strikes for him. And a 21 pin lead right off the hop for Norm. Interesting early on, Dave. These players, when they were practicing, were playing out. They were playing pretty straight from out. And I would say the last two balls in practice Norm Duke threw were with his hook game. He moved in, changed balls, and decided to go around it. We'll see if Tony can rebound off that open frame. That's how you do it. Save us there. Great pin action, Tony Reyes. All right. On his road here, you see the average as well. Qualifying 16th this week. 12 and three match play record, including a five game win. A turkey to start that match against Pete Weber in the round of eight. Never faltered from there. Had a seven game win streak in match play broken in that Matchup as well, didn't matter. Back on TV again, but still in a hole here. Perfect shot, and a double for Reyes. Yeah, pretty shot there on the left lane after he catches the wall. You know, th these are two of the funner guys on the tour. They both have real engaging personalities, a lot of fun off the lanes, and a lot of fun to watch, especially when they throw shots like that. White shoe on the right for Norm. He feels gives him better traction. Fans love it with the Duke call. And its partner has pretty much fallen apart. Bowling shoes have the components ready. Can you explain that for us? Well, you've got the heel, the sole, the inside part of the shoe. Norm is, uh, you know, he, Norm is the kind of guy, when he gets comfortable with one pair, he doesn't like to change shoes. And unfortunately, he blew apart his slide his sliding shoe. And you can see what he's done. He bowled his good buddy in the round of eight, Mike Machuga, and disposed of him 4-2. Right now, Norm Duke perfect through three frames. So wearing the different shoes, working out for him. <laughs> what a start, Norm Duke. You hear that little squeak right as he enters the slide? That's telling you he's got good traction. And when you're trying to hook the ball, you better have some leverage underneath you. You better get that slide shoe or that slide foot to come to a stop so you can deliver power at the bottom of the swing. Back to Tony Reyes. There's Norm Duke is with a front four. Yeah. Tony has found his groove. Turkey ball for him. As his mom came in, Jessica, and we mentioned a long flight in last night to be here in person. We see our Denny's road to the world championship. Patrick Allen, number one with the back-to-back -back wins, did not make the show this week, looking for three straight. Walter Ray Williams Jr. bidding for his 41st title. He's number four right now, but PA has overtaken Danny Wiseman. 
That is the official restaurant of the PBA Tour. Yeah! What a rally from Reyes. <laughs> if you're going to have an open frame, have it be your first one. And a four-bagger for Tony. That's Bowl Sunday, for sure. Uh, just putting it to Norm. He's saying, hey, I'm not afraid. Let's go, man. Watch this. Flush. <laughs> and a little holding call there. Interesting take on his Super Bowl pick we'll talk about with Tony Reyes today. We think it might be ASC since he's a Raider fan. Wow. Ted Penn and the streak broken at four in a row for Norm Duke. Now that looked pretty good. Sure did. Six goes right around the 10. Watch this. The second pin from your right, it's going to go around the 10 just like that and really fast too. Mark it down. Same kind of 10 pin that cost Mike Devaney his title last week against Patrick Allen. Second head-to-head -head matchup for Norm against Tony Reyes on TV. Actually lost to him in a player matchup. And told us last night he's had some very difficult head-to-head -head confrontations with Tony in the past. We'd like to forget he's been rolled over by Tony a few times in match play. We are chasing history coming up here on ESPN's coverage of the PBA Tour. We'll have Walter Ray Williams Jr. in a semifinal match. Number 41, can he get it? Semifinal number two against Ryan Schaefer from Elmira, New York. Ryan's first TV appearance of the season. Fourth for Walter Ray. Is this the day he ties the record? Look out. Really high through the nose. Look out indeed. Tough split coming here. Three, four, six, seven. Your shot. Got to get the ball over here. Throw the three into the four seven. The ball will take out the ten. Oh, oh, oh! Can he get it? Now the seven would not go down. Wow. Almost. But an open frame. We won't talk much more about Walter Williams Jr. and his press for number 41. And Continue this exciting semifinal between Norm Duke and Tony Reyes. Who advances to the final in Atlanta? We'll find out. The PBA Atlanta Classic from Norcross, Georgia is brought to you by Odor Eaters with unique Zorbitex technology. Destroys foot odor and absorbs sweat on contact. By Miller High Life to live simply, proudly, boldly, manly. This is the High Life. And by Dexter, the number one bowling shoe in the world. What's your size? PBA Tour Stop back at the Peach State of Georgia. Since 1970 when Wayne Zahn won the Pro-Am Classic. First time you've ever been in Norcross, about 30 minutes northeast of downtown Atlanta, Georgia. And we are indeed chasing history today. These little signs passed out to the fans here in Atlanta. Will Walter A. Williams Jr. tie the late great Earl Anthony's record of 41 career titles? The big question. And he's had two chances already on TV this year, and two times he failed, losing in the semifinals. And you get the feeling from speaking to Walter Ray, his approach to tying the record has changed quite a bit. It really has. You know, his mindset going into each and every tournament has always been the same. He goes in and tries to win every tournament. But now his mindset is different. He's got this... Earl Anthony thing starting to creep into the equation, and I think it's a distraction. And quite honestly, the longer he goes without tying Earl's record, the harder it's going to be for him. Great start, certainly, for Tony Reyes after his tough open frame. He's had a bunch of strikes in a row. Tony's big story is coming back from a knee injury right now, which has a lot to do with our Dexter approach today. Yeah, it really does. And, and Tony is still struggling with a knee injury, but professional athletes they make adjustments when they're injured. They play through injuries, and it's no different on the PBA Tour. And I'm going to show you the adjustments that Tony Reyes has made in this week's Dexter approach. Now, Tony Reyes is now starting with the ball much further away from him this way at the start. And what that does is it's going to get the ball into the swing much earlier. So now he's already creating early timing. And why do you ask? Well, because he's going to play the lanes much straighter. Watch the ball and the slide foot arrive much more together. That enables him to go much straighter. Now here's the knee injury. Look how much lower to the ground this ball is than this ball. Tony had to make the adjustments. 
This week the adjustment worked on this oil pattern. He was able to go much straighter. Four bagger for Reyes after the open frame where he missed the 10 pin, a single pin conversion. You see the strike percentage numbers. And match play only. Chance for a 15 pin lead with a fifth strike in a row. That really had to hurry. Wow. Was that light? And a tough spare coming. This is too far to the right, too far outside, too fast. Whiffs the head pin. However, he doesn't split, he leaves himself the one, two, four. 119 events and counting. And Tony's career without a title, going for his first today. So some history for Tony as well, in addition to Walter Ray bidding for number 41, and look out the head pin miss, which you just don't see, folks, on the PBA Tour ever. And another open for Tony. Are you kidding me? God. Tony Reyes doesn't have a spare yet in this game. And gives Norm Duke a 10 pin lead after that open frame. Heading into the TV show, he had 31 straight frames without an open. Going back to game two, round eight matchup, Repeat Reddit. That's a touch high, and look at the split he's got now. A 4-10. Tough one trying to kick it across the deck to the 10 pin. And he can't do it. The TV timeout. How much did that hurt Tony? He had a four bagger going. Well, I think it hurt him because his knee might have stiffened up on him. You know, in match play and in, in the uh, tournament, during the qualifier, you, you, keep, you keep going, you continue on unless uh, there's a breakdown or you're following a really slow group. But in match play, it's one shot after another. So Norm Duke tries to take advantage, and that's how that 21-time titleist does it. Two times the player of the year in 94 and 2000. Two times he's won the high average award. He is a veteran. Yeah, and when you, you open back to back against Norm Duke, it's like Norm walking down the street and finding a bag full of money. He's gonna take advantage of it. Is he ever? Looks for the double here, eighth frame. As he bids for his first title since Kansas City last season, early in the year. He's on his way. Big time shot for a future Hall of Famer, knowing that he could put all the pressure on Tony Reyes. We'll tell you much more about the show coming up next week. Riviera Lanes in Ohio. Legendary spot used to be on the PBA Tour. Back to Tony Reyes. Oh no. And again, a difficult break. Ugh. That's an 8-10. Back to back to back open frames, unless he some, somehow finds a way to convert the 8-10, which is not likely. What's happening to Tony's technique here? Looks like he's getting fast. Yep, won't kick that across for the 10 either. Another open after four straight strikes, and Norm Duke is trying to cash in now. He's got a double going, heading into his foundation frame. Boy, is that frustrating for Tony Reyes. PBA's top bowler has hit the lanes next Sunday afternoon. ESPN's coverage of the PBA Bowling Tour rocks on. The finals of the Jackson Hewitt Tax Service Open from AMF Riviera Lanes in Fairlawn, Ohio. PBA Bowling, check the start time, 12.30 Eastern. We are 2 Eastern today, 12.30 next week. That's a better shot from Tony Reyes. That's going to keep Norm Duke honest. Tony can strike out and shoot 202. Norm Duke right now. Going at a 224 pace. There. One strike. One strike. Norm can strike out to shoot 254. One strike. One strike here and it's all over. Oh, 10 pin. Mark here, all he has to do is stay behind the foul line and keep it on the lane. Oh no, I'm sorry, that, yeah, that's, that's right. He marks here, he's in the 220s. 
All he has to do in the 10th frame is stay behind the foul line, keep it on the lane, get good count, and he's a winner. First things first, cover the 10. He does that. Sixth all time in the money list, Norm Duke has surpassed two million career dollars in earnings. This year, he just needs five pins now to show out Tony Reyes and take this semifinal. We are chasing history. Coming up here from suburban Atlanta, Walter Ray Williams Jr. goes for number 41, Ty Earl Anthony's record against Ryan Schaefer, who has other ideas. Ryan, as we'll talk about, very confident in his own right. He could get his first title of the year. Tony Duke has all 10. That means a win over Tony Reyes. In the semifinals, and Norm is through to the championship match to take on either Walter Ray Williams Jr. or Ryan Schaefer. So Tony's mom, Jessica, who took Tony to all of those tournaments when Tony was young growing up, would change her times to go to church to make sure she could get Tony to the tourneys. Tony promised her in 2002. <laughs> He said, Mom, when I make another show, you'll be invited. Well, Jessica's come out to the show tonight. However, has seen her son fall this, to right? Norm Duke. Right, Good week for Tony Reyes to build on, Dave. He got him back into the top 40 for the exempt list for next year. Norm Duke is gonna ball for the title. Tony Reyes, who altered his push away due to the knee perfect. issues he's had. We'll have to wait another week for that first ever title. He was playing, he told us last night, put up the best number possible. And hey, it's fair. <laughs> see what happens. Well, what is that? at least he's had a good time with it. Yeah, Tony Reyes isn't a bad spare shooter either. I'm sure uh, he's not the only person surprised with the fact that he missed a couple spares today. But hopefully this is something he can build on. Like I said earlier, he's a great guy. All, Tony. <laughs> Last time on TV, 2002 lost to Richie Allen in Dallas, the eventual winner. There's some way help. Hey man, I wish I could have wish I could have got down there in the tenth. I totally bowled my crap. I love you, buddy. All right, you bowl good. Thanks. Great competition among friends. Duke wins the semifinal match. Walter Ray Williams Jr. will take on Ryan Schaefer in the other semi. That is coming up from suburban Atlanta. Will he get number 41? We find out today. If so. these stay on the lanes, this is a miracle. Here we go. Oh no, don't get a strike with the one right down the middle. No way. Don't even think about it. Don't even think about it. Oh, come on. That was one ball. That was only one. Oh, shit. Miller High Life selected four lucky contestants to participate in the annual Jason Couch Challenge. The bowlers were chosen at random from a sweepstakes squared off against each other in an elimination tournament. Paul Contarato from Geneva, Illinois, won and earned the chance to bowl a game against PBA great Jason Couch. Now, if Paul converted a 7-10 split, he would have received $100,000. Contarato was no match for Couch, but it was all in good fun. Took home $500, and all the contestants had a great weekend here in Norcross, Georgia. Here in Norcross, Georgia, near Atlanta, Norm Duke has knocked out Tony Reyes. Similar final number one, 222-182. Walter A. Williams, Jr. His bid of Tyrell Anthony's all-time record of 41 titles continues in a moment as he takes on Ryan Schaefer in semifinal number two. Now the round of eight of the Miller High Life PBA Skills Challenge continues. Today's matchup features the skills of Brian Voss and Brad Angelo. From Lockport, New York, Brad Angelo. From Alpharetta, Georgia, Brian Boss. No, 
I'm just trying to hit the head pin. We'll see if he can hit the head pin, knock down as many as possible. All right. Tough shot. Out of the towel. Oh, he did hit the head pin. Oh, oh. nine. Nine. Boss needs a strike to win this one. Don't hook too much. Only six. Angelo takes a right. set lead. <laughs> I'm going to spin the ball down the middle of the lane, and then both balls are going to hit the pins at the same time and, and get a strike. But the second one will be out of a towel. So there's an element of timing here, too, that has to happen. OK, let's hope that comes close, because you got to hurry up and get this in here and get the timing. So that they both you might hit not the need pins. another ball. That looks perfect. That looks does look pretty close. You need a big four here. Hey! Oh. Spectacular shot. I'm in trouble. Brad Angelo. Oh boy, that was nice. That was nice. Tell ball slams All into right. the spinning ball. Nice. Right there. Caves in the 10. Sensors off. Sensors off, correct. Uh, stay there, right there. Incredible shot uh -oh, by that Angelo. That might go in the gutter, Brian. That <laughs> might go in the gutter. Boss right, is going to match it. Hook. Come on, hook. Don't go in there the gutter. There it comes. There we go. All right. Don't wait too long. He's got a chance with a spinning ball. Now the towel shot. Uh oh, oh that's no. trouble. I'm going to have to count on the green ball. Come on, hit him all. Oh, no. Hit him all. Spinning ball almost does it for oh, Brian Boss. So 2 0 lead for Angelo. And now Brian Boss trying to get on the board. Two ball strike, opposite That's hand. Now that has got a real good chance. Yeah. 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 Can't last forever, Brad. I'm trying, though. Can't last forever. I'm trying. I'm putting up a fight, that's for sure. All right, here we go. If I keep these on the lane again, it's an absolute miracle. Boss has practiced that shot a lot. Let's see if Brad has. No. That's Boss better than I've done. He's on the board. On the there. board. That's OK. I got one strike. Round of applause That's is okay. OK. I finally got a strike. Thank you. Thank you. 2-1, Two -one, Brad Angelo the lead. First of three strikes wins. Three ball strike, opposite hand again for Brian Voss. Can he match plus one ball? With oh, the left. Talk to me. Talk to me. That's, That's got a real, good there. real, real good chance. The five will take a snap. <laughs> what was that? that was a and this is just snapping. sick. Wow. Ball ricochets Rich. off All the right. five, makes the seven. Unbelievable. All right. Good luck, Brad. Can Angelo match it here with the opposite oh, hand? No, oh, no, two. they're we all in the gutter. OK, he's coming uh, from behind. He was down 0-2 at one time. 0-2 at one time. That means we're tied 2-2. Right, Next person to get a strike wins the competition. Got to cross him here. 4-6, split. Not the black one this time. Oh, yes, Brad. It's on. All right. OK. I love the this boss it, this celebration is the dances. You're right, this is. This is for the week. I understand. Boss showing off his Andy Vera Papa. Chris Cross. Angelo must match. Otherwise, it's over. Oh, that's going to be close, but no cigar. <laughs> and Brian Voss rallies down 0 2, wins at 3 2. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Brian Voss. All right. Join us next week from the Jackson Hewitt Tax Service Open, where the round of eight action continues. Parker Bone III taking on Michael Haugen Jr. Now that was fun to watch. Brian Kretzer, Chris Barnes are still alive as well. Our full bracket of the Miller Highlight PBA Skills Challenge. Boss over Angelo in that one. Still come today here from suburban Atlanta, Georgia. Will Walter A. Williams Jr. tie Earl Anthony's record? 41 career titles. He takes on Ryan Schaefer in the semis next. Two weeks ago, left-handed PBA veteran Patrick Allen forever etched his name into the PBA history books.
He took care of last year's point champion Brad Angelo in the finals. Yeah, Dallas! Yeah! Taking home a title in Texas. That was followed last week by a nail biter in Birmingham, Alabama. After that big shot, Mike Devaney on his second of the tenth needed the strike. It was a 10 pin, and on the bench, Patrick Allen had his second straight championship. With that, PA became the first lefty since Parker Bone the third in 97 to log back to back PBA Tour titles. Jam packed house in suburban Atlanta, Georgia, for the PBA Atlanta Classic. And some of the young fans have a 41 sign, hoping it'd be a part of history today. Norm Duke is thrilled over Tony Reyes. Who wins the second semifinal? We'll find out shortly. They're both joined now by Randy Peterson. Ryan, the big news this week is this guy here trying to tie Earl Anthony's record of 41 career titles, but you have a chance to play spoiler. Is that added incentive? Yeah, it's added incentive. I mean, Walter Ray is probably the greatest bowler ever, um, but he's got these things in the crowd that say 41, but I'm going to change him to turn it to 4 plus 1 and put my initials on it. Great, Ryan. Thanks very much. Good luck. Wow. Well, Walter Ray, with a win today, not only do you tie Earl's record, but you throw yourself right in the middle of player of the year race. Which one motivates you more? Both. I, I, I want to be player of the year again, and I want to get 41 and 42 titles. The best way to do it to win this week. Great. Thanks, Walter Ray. Good luck. <laughs> Dave Ryan, remember, if Walter Ray were to win player of the year again, he would surpass Earl Anthony and become the only player in PBA history to win that honor seven times. They both have six right now. Randy, you are correct. And that is what is on the line. The prize money and the points. Ryan Schaefer, much more important as he's made the climb, as we'll document, from real trouble in terms of exemption from next year. From Elmira, New York, southern tier of New York State near the Pennsylvania border, not far from Binghamton. First ball of a TV show for him this year. Good pin action for Ryan Schaefer. Sounded pretty confident in his interview, didn't he? How about those words? <laughs> <laughs> he was thinking about that as soon as he saw the 41 signs being passed out. And Walter Ray Williams' wife, Paige, is here to support her husband. Speaking of good pin action, the paralyzing five goes down. For Walter Ray, his mother is here as well, Esther from Northern California. Paige's parents, Tom and Billy Sue, have made the trip as well as we lead into our Baby Ruth Real Deal matchup. The cranker versus the straighting. When you think of a guy that cranks it, you think of a lot of strikes and big scores. But check this out. Walter Ray averaging 14 pins a game higher than Ryan Schaefer. Look out. Off the mark for Deadeye. Yeah, pinch too hard. The horseshoe pitching champion. Walter Race is too hard. Watch the ball. It doesn't even hook in the back part of the lane. The first frame, he basically caved in the bucket that time too hard, leaving the 2 4 5. It's odd to see Walter Ray ever leave a five pin. Very rare. But does take care of the spare nicely. To avoid the open, that was something that did in Tony Reyes in our first semifinal today. Third attempt for Walter Ray to tie the record. In St. Louis, he lost to eventual champ Rick Lawrence in Medford to Mike Wolf. They both eventually won their titles. Ryan Schaefer's road here. Very impressive. Six game win, including a seven bagger over Brian Himmler in the round of eight. Come on. Yeah. Oh, he's nicely on the. Back end of the oil pattern, good ball reaction from Schaefer. Love ball looked a little bit light off the release, but once it hit the back side of the pattern, hooked perfectly into the pocket. Yeah, he, you know that revolution and rotation he's got on it. Once it cleared the pattern, man, it went left like somebody kicked it down there. And early, it looks like the hook ball is the way to go. Norm Duke used it. He beat Tony Reyes in the first match. Ryan Schaefer using it against Walter Ray Williams Jr. Look out. Wow! Unbelievable ball reaction from Ryan Schaefer. He is throwing it so hard, folks, to see that ball and right back to the pocket on the back end of the oil. Yeah, this ball here, 
It looked like it was. Whoa! It wasn't going to get back, and it just turned the corner. I'm going to go right, get him some coffee right now to go with that sweet roll. Yeah. That's Ray answers, but a ten pin on a well thrown ball. Could this develop again, folks, for Walter A. Williams Jr., who, in his two matches on TV after getting his 40th win, he mentioned St. Louis to eventual champ Rick Lawrence, Medford to Mike Wolf, ran into buzzsaws, really. Those guys bowl well on TV. This is a great start for Ryan Schaefer, who saw the single pin numbers as Walter Ray increases his percentage there. You saw that stat, Walter Ray missing seven. Single pin spares since 2002. He told us last night that he misses one 10 pin out of every 100 or 200 tries. Something like that. And the all time greats, no question about it. That's why they call him Dead Eye. And he's figured out the reaction on that lane, no question. And we've gone 26 straight frames heading into this final without an open. Pretty much perfect right there. He's thrown a lot of them there, by the way, uh, in his career. You don't win 40 titles without throwing the ball in the 1-3 a lot. Schaefer, meanwhile, trying to continue the good start. Got the front four yeah, to go for here. There. Little gentle fun with former champion in his own right. Chris Barnes, who's known to take his time sometimes on his delivery. Ten pin. Pretty good shot. Anytime you leave a ring in ten, you know it's, it's real close to being good. This ball gets left a little bit, and when it stays in the, in the pattern a little bit longer, you know, you've got a little oil created in the middle part of the lane. It pushes just a little bit longer before it goes left. Usually it snaps the six around the ten. Well, He'll get it. As he bids for his first title since November of 2003, the Empire State Open, Latham, New York. All basketball I'll tell you about. UConn, Syracuse. How about the Orange last night in front of an all-time NCAA on-campus crowd? Huge throng there gathered to see their win over Notre Dame and Oklahoma, Oklahoma State rematch. OU trying to sweep the pokes in their two games this year. First time since the 98-99 season. Oklahoma lost last night to Texas Tech. Oklahoma State won over Baylor in the Big 12. Schaefer stays high. And one of the most incredible stats I've ever read about Walter A. Williams Jr. is that this marks the 13th consecutive season. He has made at least four shows. Shots like that, an incredible streak. Oh, and by the way, he's back. There's a double, Ryan Schaefer, don't let up. It looks like he's moved a little bit further right, got a little bit softer, now all of a sudden you see a down lane ball reaction. 148 career TV appearances. You're on TV that much, you win 40 titles, you know about adjustments like that. Looks for a double sixth frame to even things up. That was really high in the big four. Wow. Remains for Walter Ray right through the nose. Just looked pretty good, and then all of a sudden he got to the middle part of the lane and started to go left. Right now, Walter Ray looks like he's in that in-between zone. A little bit too far to the right, it hooks high. He moves in off of that, and if he gets a pinch fast, it goes light. Look out! Who you yeah! got it? Four! Are you kidding me? television anyone has made the big four we saw it today how about Walter A. Williams Jr.
from Norcross, Georgia, near Atlanta. The PBA on ESPN is brought to you by Geico. You too could save 15% or more on car insurance. Call Geico at 1-800-947-AUTO. By Uniroyal Tires, the official tire of the PBA Tour. Uniroyal Tires, trusted by American families since 1892. And by Bear, the more you know, the more you trust Bear. Welcome back. Welcome back. The largest city in the state of Georgia and the capital has seen one of the large moments, Randy, of the PBA Tour. We have seen 16 300 games on television. We have seen three 710s. We had never seen a big four conversion until today. Four seven six ten. Walter A. Williams Jr. Unbelievable. Yeah, amazing. Well, it doesn't surprise me that he did it. Back to Ryan Schaefer. Perfect shot. And a double for him. Strikes in frames five and six. Quite a reaction we saw from our crew from Ryan of that big four conversion. Sometimes, even when you're in a match, I'd imagine, you know from winning your 13 titles, you've got to be sure you don't get overwhelmed by what your opponent is doing like that. Without question, Ryan needs to stay in the moment and just concentrate on what he's doing. Now the finishers, bottom of your screen. <laughs> Big shot again from Ryan Schaefer. It, it, it's really a, a neat story about Ryan Schaefer and, and his struggles throughout the year. He had it going last week, could have made the show. All he needed was a mark, the 10th frame of the last game, the round of eight, and split. And right now, he's got Walter Ray on the run. Turkey now for Schaefer with the three straight strikes. Down 34 pins, works on a strike, eighth frame. Walter Ray, a chance to reduce the lead of Schaefer to 24. As this legend chases the left-handed legend, Earl Anthony, trying for 41 titles, right at the pocket. Change balls in that lane, that was a trouble lane. He came through it. Wow. It lays off a little bit more. It doesn't hook quite as sharp down the lane, so he can let the front part of the lane make that ball start to turn up. Just have it kind of roll set. Now it's Schaefer, who battles diabetes on a daily basis. Also has a hip problem. That's given him a lot of trouble. Strain tendon. Wow. Is rallying. Four bagger for Schaefer. Two completely different lines to the pocket. Walter Ray right up first arrow, right about right there. Nice and direct. You see the ball kind of roll up and stop. Ryan Schaefer is going to go this way. Both about the same break point down the lane, but because of that side rotation and revolutions, he gets his ball to kick off of that spot and hook up into the pocket. But in, in either case, you still have to be accurate. Your ball speed has to be good. The ball has to come off your hand the same way twice. He's got a fan here in Atlanta. Ryan's wife, Michelle, is watching back home in Elmira, New York. Snow and cold of upstate. Ryan trying yeah. to heat it up. Here in Atlanta, he's doing just that as he gets great pin action. Big time that break. Terrible. The best Walter Ray Williams Jr. can shoot. 245. Ryan Schaefer's already in the 250s. He can strike out for 279. Looks for the turkey ball. Foundation frame, big strike. Down 34 pins, can cut it to 24. Cannot falter here. Stranger things have happened, and we've seen it before with Walter Ray. He strikes out, he forces Ryan Schaefer to do something good in the 10th frame, like a mark, or any kind of mark. But we've seen stranger things happen. First things first, strike out. Wow! Eight pin. Not gonna happen today for Walter Ray. All but eliminates Walter Ray from this semifinal match. Ryan Schaefer will boil Norm Duke in the final. 
And the quest for number 41 to tie Earl Anthony's all-time title Where record will have to wait another day. <laughs> the pocket. For another tournament. Right. Three times Walter Ray <laughs> has been on TV to try to tie the record. Three times he'll fall short, each time in the semis. And Ryan Schaefer hopes history repeats itself because the prior two victors over Walter Ray in the semis, as the quest continued, won their respective tournaments. As we pointed out, Rick Lawrence, Mike Wolf. How about Ryan Schaefer's bid for his first title of the season? Uh-oh. Oh. Yeah, you beat Walter Ray, you go on to win the tournament. It's a shame. Great, great game that Ryan Schaefer bowled. Kept the pressure on Walter Ray the entire match. He's going to be in the 250s with a spare here. Takes care of the 10 pin. Ryan Schaefer, who told us how frustrated he was at the way things were going, likes the new format this year. Is even talking about because he hadn't had success. Well, maybe I shouldn't even do this. Maybe I should open up a bowling center back home or build one. In Corning, New York, near Elmira. Next, Great ball. Well, those plans are put on hold for a while because he could be exempt with a tour win here today. And number 41 for Earl Anthony is still safe. Walter Ray's quest will have to wait at least another tournament. Schaefer is through to the final. Saturday's Pro-Am was a special event for 17-year-old Bobby Hall from Fort Mill, South Carolina. Bobby was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis at the age of two. His wish was to bowl alongside his PBA idol, Pete Weber. Children's Wish Foundation International, PBA, helped make this wish come true. Well, I basically picked Pete because I've always liked his outgoing style of bowling, how he's really swollen, he just gets in everybody's face. Just the loudest guy out there, loves to bowl. It's just great. I love the way he just carries himself. To be picked by Bobby to, for his Make-A-Wish from the foundation, uh, it's just an honor and, and thrill for me to be part of it. And there is Bobby Hall. That organization fulfills wishes for seriously ill children, provides support for their families as well, based here in Atlanta. How about Super Bowl picks for our four bowlers? Well, Walter Williams Jr., not much of a football fan, but Tony Reyes goes for the Raiders. You know that they're not playing, of course, since he's from the Bay Area. So he's got to be an AFC fan for the big game tonight. Ryan Schaefer for the Eagles. Now, why is that? Well, Ryan is from Elmira, New York, not far from the Syracuse University campus, where Donovan McNabb was a big star for the Syracuse Orange. Let's find out more about Ryan Schaefer in this week's Miller Six Pack. Ryan, who did you want to be when you were growing up? Well, I'm a real big Yankees fan, and uh, that was the era when they had the Bronx Zoo with Reggie Jackson and Thurman Munson and those guys. But I always pretended I was Greg Nettles playing third base. For you, what is the best time of day? Best time of day is late at night. Why? Uh, it's just because probably nobody's awake and I can do what I want to do. And my wife goes to bed early because she's got to wake up, and I can kind of do the housework and get everything done I need to get done. If you could have dinner with any three persons, living or dead, who would they be and why? Probably the first person I like to have dinner with is Don Mattingly. Uh, he was my favorite Yankee of all time. Uh, secondly, probably Martin Luther King Jr. Um, I'm a big history buff, and uh, my American history teacher uh, was really big on Martin Luther King Jr., and I would like to sit down and talk to him. Uh, and probably, and this is a strange one, but uh, Richard Nixon, because I'd like to know what the hell he was thinking. What is the smartest thing you've ever done? Marry my wife, no question about it. Um, she's the nicest person I've ever met, and she made me a better person. What is the one thing that you do that takes your mind completely off of bowling? Every day, uh, I try to read the sports section in USA Today and do the crossword puzzle. And I don't think about bowling when I'm doing either of those. What is your favorite word and why? Probably my favorite word is Joel. And that's because everybody calls me Joel, and you can use it with a lot of people. Like if you're in public and somebody won't get out of your way, you say, hey, Joel, get out of the way, and they really don't know who's, who's, who you're talking to, but it's pretty funny. How did you ever arrive at this nickname, Joel? Who gave it to you? Eugene. 
McEwen, my roommate, uh, we were watching Risky Business, and uh, when Guido the Killer Pimp was chasing everyone, uh, he said, Joel, I think I'm going to throw up on you, Joel, and then Eugene just started calling me Joel, and it stuck. <laughs> <laughs>
Wonderful setup it's been for the players and our ESPN crew here. Ten pin again. Wow. Schaefer leaves a weak ten on the left lane. Duke leaves a ringing ten on the right lane. And with a spare, we're all even after three. Check this out. Playing the inside line, his body's open, his hand's underneath it, he's flipping it. Getting that ball going right to left. The only thing missing was that, that shot not carrying. You told us before the show today, takes care of the ten. That yes, the shoes do look a little bit unusual having one of each, but it started wearing the white and black shoe last week in Alabama. The approaches right. were similar. Synthetic surfaces here. Please. And PBA.com, your best source for all the latest tournament results, stats, stories from the PBA Tour. In addition, you can sign up to view selected archive PBA Tour telecast by the PBA's pay-per-view Strike Pass service. Strike Pass gives you the chance to relive some of the tour's memorable TV moments, so check it out at PBA.com today. So back-to-back -back weeks with the shoes to finish that story for Norm. Lane comparison, there's a breakdown. And there's a strike. I think the other interesting story about Norm Duke is this week he's using completely different equipment than he's used before. Boom, makes the show. Who wins the final today here in suburban Atlanta, Georgia? On Super Sunday, a thriller all even, Schaefer and Duke. Winning a trophy like that, so big for Ryan Schaefer, who enters play top 30 in points. Head to head with Norm Duke here in the final. To clinch a spot, exempt tour next year needs to really get that victory today, leading us to the Unirail Tire Rock and Roll. Yeah, and this is all world here. History in the making. Watch Walt Ray heave it. He's going to throw the pins over the left. Grossly seven into the four. Unbelievable. Even Ryan Schaefer couldn't believe it, but he did survive in that semifinal match as Walter Ray's bid to tie Earl Anthony's title record of 41. Derailed again, a third time on TV. He's been denied. So now, Schaefer, Duke, center stage. The back end of the lane and the oil pattern, the ball just takes off like a shot into that pocket, perfectly every time. And th that looked like it came off of that spot really smooth, more of an arky type of move. And I think that's what Ryan Schaefer is looking to get his ball to do to give himself the best chance of striking. It's no. a 7-10. Well, we've seen hey, the Walter big Ray. four. <laughs> For the first time ever from Walter A. Williams Jr. How about the fourth ever on TV from Schaefer, a 7-10. Can it be ready? Well, if Walter Ray can make the big four, he certainly can make the 7-10. But watch how the ball enters the pocket. It looked like it just quit on him. Jay Stayrook, 91. Last time in Tucson. What do you say, Ryan? Oh. Number seven stays up. And an open frame halfway through the championship match. Suddenly, Duke up by 12, works on a strike chance for a 22-pin lead. The door is open. Yeah, it's almost like uh, feeding time at the lion cage. Open frame for Norm Duke. He's going to be all over you <coughs> like a bulldog on a pork chop. Someone moved to his right. Regroup, take a deep breath, act like it, it didn't happen. Get up there and throw a good shot. So it's a fresh shot clock. Movement down the lane. Fresh clock. Big shot here. That's wow. all 10 down in the pit. A double and a 22 pin lead for Norm Duke. Robert Smith continues to stay hot. He's won already once on tour this year. He's made a couple shows, 12th currently. And as we mentioned, coming out of that commercial break, Ryan Schaefer really has made that comeback. However, 
who is cold at the moment. Doug Kent made a final earlier in the year. And Peter Hernandez of Miami continues to struggle. Both happen to be roommates. Normally when the room was ice cold like that, you, you got rid of your roommate and you got a new one. Try to change the karma. Turkey ball try, Norm Duke. Has it. Thing of beauty. That was a thing of beauty, Dave. Thank you, Crocodile. 32 pin lead. Right over the center dot, which is, or the center arrow, which is the 20th board, right over the middle part of the lane, up to about the 6th, 7th board, and just perfectly flush. Schaefer must answer. Title match record, under 500. That's how you get right back in the match. Coming off the open frame. 19th year on tour for Ryan Schaefer. We will try along with the rest of the PBA Tour bowlers. Next week, Jackson Hewitt, Tax Service Open, Riviera Lanes near Akron, Ohio. 12.30 Eastern Time. Note the start time here on ESPN. For more, log on to ESPN.com as our tour continues. We'll have several 12.30 Eastern start times. Today, unusual at 2 o'clock Eastern. Our live coverage of the PBA Tour continues. Norm's game outstanding so far. Five or six frames he has struck. Schaefer looks for the double. Gets it. Nice little move. Looks like he's tightened up his line just to shave from in. Can't use a re-rack every time. Doesn't like the rack on that left lane. In fact, I think both players have re-racked on that left lane, but hey, good result there. Norm Duke in the driver's seat right now, though. 22 pin lead can increase it to 32. 279 max for Duke in this game. Looks for the four bagger. Yes, sir. In his 83rd career appearance on TV, in his 64 and 62 lifetime on television. A 22 event streak without a victory could very well come to an end today. He is en route. Bidding for title number 22 of his great career. He would tie Marshall Holman for ninth place on the all-time title list with 22. Gladly take just the two pin up there and a ball that out of his hand could have been big trouble. Boy, right you are. Check this out. He fans it at the bottom and look how far right it gets. He's lucky to be looking at nine. Near perfect, single pin numbers. Has it under. Fifteen straight years, three shows at least for Norm Duke. Nineteenth year on tour here for Schaefer. There's four titles, more than a million dollars in earnings. Looks for the turkey ball here, eighth frame. And cut the lead to 21 for Duke. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Wow. That helps a lot. Yeah, hold it. He thought that ball was going high. It laid there nicely. And Ryan Schaefer, with a strike here, is right back in this match. Foundation frame time. This is big. Looks for the four bagger. Can be down 11. Hold it, hold it. Four stands for him. Two hold it's after he went light on that left lane. Two hold it's in a row. Unfortunately, this one is going to leave a four pin. Just breaks loose just a little bit down the lane. Takes care of it. So for a bowler who is 
Really struggling, as you told us, a couple of events back, 38 in the points list. He thought it would be a stretch to make it to the exempt tour for next year. He says he will not attend qualifying school, won't go to the tour trials. He'd rather open a bowling center back home in New York State or buy an existing center. But he's bowled so well the last two weeks, fifth last week in Birmingham. Just missed the show. At least the finals here today. Things have changed for him. 22 pin lead, Norm Duke. No! Oh! 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 Are you kidding me? He just missed having to face the 7 10. Yeah, that was huge, too, because, you know, Norm Duke, this could have cost him this title. The blowout 7 10. Gets the 10 nine. late. Now, here's the Make deal. Spare. Norm Duke Make spare. needs to make this spare. Show up in the 10th frame with decent count and a mark, and he's going to win his 22nd title. Number seven goes down. Needs a mark for the title. That's it. And he'll take home the championship from Atlanta. What do you do? Do you take the uh, spare ball and throw it straight down the middle nice and hard? Or do you go with what, uh, what's gotten you there? He's going with what got him there. Dance with the one you came with. What a great shot. This ball gets way out. He gets he gets the good hand oh, and it kicks to 10 bad. late. And when you need a mark, that's the kind of mark you want. Stormin Norman Duke. 22nd career title. Gah! One more to boot for the Duke of Atlanta. Sweet! Hey, guess what? Add another name to the list for Player of the Year honors. You better make some room for Duke. This ball doesn't weigh much. Six pounder. Have some fun with that, Norm. <laughs> Karen, son Brandon back home in Florida, must be thrilled beyond words. Happy birthday, sweetheart. <laughs> Both Norm and Walter Ray were really interacting with the crowd before our show today. I'm sure he met those fine bowling fans, signed a lot of autographs, and they'll all go home happy. He finally caught me in age. <laughs> <laughs> He just loves it. Great showman. It's a done, it's a done deal. I care, I it is done. I'll have to whisper it now. Shout out for his family back home. Great week for Ryan Schaefer, who really had an incredible story, Randy. A few weeks ago, he was thinking, I might be done on tour after 19 years. My career could be over. I may become a proprietor. Now he's back. Ryan Bold, great. I think I would have thrown him that good if I needed him. It wasn't uh, for the pocket 7-10 he left in the fifth frame. He had had something to say when it came down to the 10th frame as to who was going to win this title. His best showing in the first half was the 13th. Now he's a runner up. What a great bowling you did today all week, man. What a great count. The 22nd time in his brilliant career as a PBA Tour champion. He wins in Atlanta this afternoon. The PBA Atlanta Classic from Norcross, Georgia is brought to you by Miller High Life. To live simply, proudly, boldly, manly, this is the High Life. By Baby Ruth, the official candy bar of the PBA. Baby Ruth from Nestle, the real deal.
and by Denny's. Try one of Denny's new hearty scrambles, the Meat Lovers or the Heartland Scramble for just $4.99. Denny's. For the 22nd time in his brilliant career, Norm Boot is a PBA Tour champion in front of a jam-packed house here in suburban Atlanta. And Norm, you made an equipment change this week. How important was that for your victory? Well, I think it was paramount. I mean, I've, I'm more than a year reserved from this spot. I missed it. I made the change thinking that uh, th that, that was the difference. And, uh, and, and here I am holding this trophy. So I'd like to thank Brunswick Zone Norcross. Thank you for such a great event. Uh, Dave, it's been a great week. These people are really electric. We've, we've not come to uh, Atlanta in some years, and so they, they showed us a welcome that, that it's, it was sweet. Congratulations, Norm Duke, and enjoy the celebration tonight. Norm Duke, a winner again, everyone, here in suburban Atlanta as he takes his 22nd career title in a very exciting final over Ryan Schaefer. So congratulations go out to Norm Duke today. Along with the entire crew, my partner Randy Peterson, it's Dave Ryan saying so long, reminding you next Sunday, the PBA Jackson Hewitt Tax Service Open comes to you from Riviera Lanes in Farallon, Ohio. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Man of the Hour, Norm Duke. European figure skating champions are next.